Hi, this is Mr. D. Hobbs, and welcome to episode number 9 on the Infinium Craft server. Okay, here I am at spawn, and following on from my last video where I made the flower farm, I've now made a little shop here to go alongside it. You can see here I've got a speed 2 and jump 2 boost from this um, beacon here. But yeah. So here's the little flower shop, flower store that I've made. Pop up onto the top here so I can just finish it off. Lay the last little bit of carpet down. There we go. Okay, so let's just hop back down. Yeah, so there's the sign. Mr. D. Hobbs's flower store. Payments chest, pay what you like. And so here are all the different flowers that I've found so far within the world. I believe there's one more uh, in White Oxide or something like that, but I haven't actually found any of those yet. But yeah. Oh, it looks like I've got a first customer coming over. So hopefully he's not going to come because otherwise it's going to. We can bring all his mates with him, but I don't know. Looks like he is. Okay, I'll just have to kill this guy off quick. Bye bye. Right. Okay, yes, yeah, so where was I? Yes, yeah, so there. These are all the flowers I've found so far. Um, and just keep this stocked, stocked up using the new flower farm. Okay, over this way are the horses that are for sale by God's Garden. I've actually bought one of the horses here. His name's not Mr. D. Hobbs, it's just to put a sign up there just to say that it's Mr. D. Hobbs' horse. Oh, who's that? Can't quite see the name tag. I've got the Optifine running now, so we've got to zoom out. It's Stan Hobbs, 06. He's on his way over to have a look. Hello, Stan. Okay, where's this horse? Yeah, so this is my horse, I haven't named him yet. And the reason why he's over here is because I haven't actually built a stables back of base yet. So I thought I'd leave him here. Oh, ouch, that hurt. Maybe it'd be a good idea to get out of the stables before you try jumping. That's better. Yeah, not a bad little horse. He's quite quick and tends to jump quite high. Stan seems impressed. All right, time to chase him. Come back here, you. Come on, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Up onto the beacon. Where is he? Oh. OK, it looks like Stan's found something interesting on the beacon to have a look at. OK, let's pop the horse back. Now he's had his little bit of exercise. So let's run him back around the corner here, line him up with the stables, and then in we go. Turn around, close one of the gates, and then that way I can jump off and he won't escape. That's it, and close the gate behind me. Lovely. OK, so I'm over here at Mr. Peeper's Iron Golem Bounce House, as it says there. But it's golems aren't bouncing, and it looks like we've had a bit of a, a creeper explosion or something going on here. Yeah, a bit of a hole down there to the redstone, and most of the mechanics are missing. Ah, here's one of the creepers. Uh, creeper. Here's one of the iron golems, looking very sad and dejected, looking down at the ground. Ah, I wonder if there's a mob or something under the ground that he's looking at. He looks really sad. Ah, what's that over there? Oh no, that's just another the other iron golem. He doesn't look quite so sad, but something's caught his attention over this way. Another creeper explosion hole. Hello. Hello, Mr. Iron Golem. No, he's not in a talkative mood today. Okay, so let's head back over to this guy. Yeah, something's definitely got his attention. Hello. Uh, no, that's just a cactus farm. I can hear a mob, but I can't see it anywhere. And can't get into that farm at all to go and find out what it is. So I have to just have to leave him there staring at it. Okay, now the main purpose of today's episode is to start building my new base. So here we are heading over towards the flower farm over that way, and in the opposite direction this way is where I've started building it. And the base I'm going to be building is what's known as the Tiger's Nest, which is a um, Buddhist temple. Okay. So as we head through the portal here, we're going to see what I've done so far. And here we are, as you see, I've already started, got quite a bit done so far. Mr. D. Paro Taxang, which is also known as Tiger's Nest. Okay, so this is the interior now. Obviously the interior, oh, there are no photographs off because of the fact it's a temple. Not allowed to take photographs inside. Um, but as we work our way upstairs here, to the next floor. See quite a nice view out through the red stained glass, through to the next building over there on the other side of the mountain. This little courtyard area. And you can see we've got an extra floor out there with a pathway across the other building, so we'll go up there and have a look at that. Not too sure what I'm going to do with this area here yet, so I'm just leaving that as it is. These take it out onto the roof. Sometimes get some mobs dropped down, but it all looks clear at the moment. 
shut the door behind just in case. And a little crow's nest sort of area up the top there, just for decoration. Okay, so here's the uh, pathway across to the next one. Now what I'm going to do for this bit is I'm going to make it into a little enchanting room. So the enchanting table and the bookshelves in here. I think that'll look quite nice. Okay, so heading back over to here again. Now as we have a look over here, I'm just going to get a better view of the, the house from this corner here. See, it's beginning to come on quite nicely now. It's starting to look a little bit like the other building with the bread stain clay in. And blocks there, looks quite good. Well, let's have a look from over on this mountain over here. So, you can be into pearls really. Where are they? There they are. Okay, so I'm going to try to bounce myself over. A bit like that. Use the block move on the sword. Because it used to block any damage, but I don't think it works. But it's a force of habit, that is. Okay, so yes, the building looking quite nice now. Starting to come on well. I'm um, just missing one building over here on the left hand side, which I've got to get down, but the rest of it was all looking pretty good. Um, whilst it's going to need a bit of tidying up with the hill. There's a nice cave area there for me to go investigating, which should be pretty good. Nice bit of exploring going on. And a nice waterfall there. That was already there when I started. That's one reason why I picked this mountain. Nice sort of natural waterfall. Okay, so let's bounce myself back over again. Again, still doing the blocking move, even though it's not really doing Oh, I think I'm right on the... Yeah, right on the edge. Oh, with 73 XP levels, I don't really want to die. Okay, so this is just the template for the third building, which I haven't done yet. And there's a little passageway here that I've made. So I don't believe that's part of the real building, but I'll put it in there. Just a bit of artistic license. Okay, so let's try blocking the back up again with the dirt again. Okay, another update, and as you see a bit more decorating going on, got some pictures up on the wall. I like with my other house, these ones aren't actually covering any secret rooms or anything like that. They're just purely for decoration. And as you see, lots and lots of chests lined up on the walls now, ready to store all my stuff. If we head upstairs, another change I've done here is I've put in this little sort of open air area, just to make the room feel a bit bigger. And you can see I've now got the enchanting room sorted. So that's all set up, ready to go. Okay, so we head on back over to this way, go through the double doors, and you'll see that the third building is now complete. So I'll just switch around and pop into there. Oh, hello, Christ Warrior. Just say hi, Tim. Hi, Chris. There we go. The autocomplete on names is really helpful, especially when somebody's got a long name like that one. Okay, so let's head down these stairs. I'm not too impressed with these stairs at the moment. I've got to try and figure out a nice way of doing them, but they work at the moment. Okay, so here's that little passageway that I was mentioning earlier, and this is the new building. I see this up. Oh, I've actually decided to use it as the entrance to the mine. And what I've done is I've used, taken a, a technique of his. Um, that's a drop of doom there. Um, but yeah, I've taken a technique from um, the Hermitcraft guys, and also from Mr. Peepers. Um, where you, oh, let's quickly jump into that before it disappears, yeah. So using this minecart, to go down into the actual mine itself and then sending mine carts with chests with all my loot back up to the surface. So a little bit of a combination of two people's um, ideas and combine them into one. Okay, so just destroy that and then pop up in this chest and that's where the, uh, the mine carts with chests are. So we can take one of those out and pop it onto the track and then it's ready to collect. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm now, well, here's the uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to do an hour challenge where I see how much um, ores I can get in one hour's solid mining. So this is the technique that I'm using, and basically what it is is every 11 blocks I then dig in as far in as I can go before it gets too dark. So just digging in here so it's a bit dark now, so head back to the beginning, and then we'll do four blocks in. I'll just get rid of these red stone also here, just clear these out. And so that's all done. Okay, so just fill that gap back in again. Uh, no, don't want to fill it in with water, I want to fill it in with the block. There we go. Okay, so every four blocks, one, two, three, four, put a torch, and then just dig in five blocks. Okay, no walls that way. Dig in five blocks that way. Nope, no walls again. But then by doing that every four blocks, so one, two, three, four, another torch. One, two, three, oh, I'm going to need to carry on down, dig down a bit further. So basically, yeah, just digging in like this, so digging as far as you want, and then every four blocks, so it's one, two, three, 
See how many torches I've laid. So let's go back to the beginning. It's one torch, two, three, four, five. Okay, so just do another three blocks. So I am laying six torches, four blocks apart, and then digging in as far as I can go, which is five blocks. So one, two, five, and same that way. One, two, three, four, five. Anyway, by doing this, yeah, generally speaking, ores tend to be around about uh, in in clusters of sort of two or so. So by separating out your poke holes by four blocks, so there's three blocks between each each poke hole, it means that you're guaranteed to see at least one of the the blocks that are, I've got always in. And that way then it just minimises the amount of digging. Previously I've done the technique of just digging in every every sort of second block, but that involves a lot more digging for not many more ores. Um, so I'm just trying this technique to see if this is any quicker. Just collecting all this coal. And there does seem to be a lot of coal in this biome, which is quite handy. Well, I do tend to have quite a bit of it anyway, but coal we can use to trade with the villagers back at KP's villager trading hall. So it's useful still picking it all up, and then we've got loads of it. Okay, so done that way. Get some fire blocks that way again. And that's it. That's as far that way as I can go. Okay, so we need that torch, so on to the next torch, and again, digging the five blocks, nothing in that one, no, all clear. And digging five blocks that way, no, all clear, Do, don't need that torch though. Okay, next one. Oh, there we go, so because we've got some redstone in there, just dig in, collect all of it. Sometimes there's other ores as well, yep, oh, there we go, some iron, so I'll collect that as well. Anything else? No, nope, that's all of it. What I used to do with the old techniques as well as I used to fill in all the holes to, to reduce chances of mob spawning, but I'm not bothering with this technique. This is just purely for speed, minimising the amount of blocks I'm having to clear out to reach as many of the ores as possible. Just trying to streamline my mining process as much as possible to get as, as many much ores for as little work. Okay, do I need that torch? Yes, I do. Oh, click that one. I missed that one. That's it. Okay, so then this is the last one, already dug that way, so get rid of the torch, yep, all done. Okay, now obviously if your inventory's full up you can empty it out, or just continue on into the next one. There we go. Okay, so when your inventory is full, you head on to, to the chest, then just empty everything out by shift, clicking on each one of the items until all the spaces within the chest are full up, which looks like they pretty much are. Just run through all the various items, and okay, so that's them all cleared out. <coughs> Sorry about that. And then once they are clear, just nudge the chest, away it goes, into this chest, pick up another one, lay that one on the track and carry on. Okay, so here we are, and after an hour's mining, I managed to get 75 diamonds, which is great. Two emeralds showing that we're in a Extreme Hills biome, quite a bit of gold and iron, 48 lapis and the redstone, quite, you know, large amount of redstone and iron, and then all these other blocks as well. So, yeah, not a bad haul in the end, and uh, certainly worthwhile doing. It's quite nice sort of focusing your attention there for a whole hour on just doing one task. Just to get a bit of music on and away you go. Okay, so another update from outside the building. And as you see, I've now just added a garden area by the side of the, uh, the third building there. And yeah, it's looking quite nice with it up at night. I'm really, really pleased with the way this building's turned out. It's not exactly like it is in, um, in that original picture that I showed, but it's coming on nicely. That caving system I can't use because it's now got that uh, minecart track in it, but other than that, it still looks good. Oh, I'm sure there's a mob there, but it just, just despawned as I was looking at it. Okay, now I'm going to see somebody just dropping in there on the left hand side. There he is. There, I was a creeper, right? So I'll stay over here whilst he's over there because I don't want to teleport over and then um, him blow the building up. Okay, and as you see, I've come on really well. It's looking really, really detailed. <laughs> Only joking. That's the photograph. This is the actual update. And as you can see, it's raining again, but. All the bushes are now in, or bushes as they're known, and um, yeah, really now sort of sets the building into the mountain rather than it's been perched on top. Okay, a final, another run at the uh, one hour mining challenge. This time it was at the level 10, whereas the previous one was at level 6, and as you see, not quite so many diamonds, but quite a bit more emeralds, um, and everything else seems about the same. So yeah, very useful little trick that. Okay, well, thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.